This is the Toyota FJ Cruiser, which is everybody's favorite life-size Tonka truck. It's got that quirky retro look and a true 4x4 capability. But what is it like to drive in tight Manila roads? Well, I'm here with the car and we're going to find out right now by going around it, checking out its, well, features and fun facts, and then after which, I'm going to take it for a short drive to see what it's all about. Let's do this. When people in Toyota started waxing nostalgic and they said that I want to have a retro looking truck, they turned to the FJ40 back in the 1980s for inspiration. And fast forward several years after that, well not really several years from 1980s, more like a couple of decades, and we have here the Toyota FJ Cruiser. Now this toy-like truck is based on the Land Cruiser Prado. So you could expect that this has some serious off-roading capabilities. First up, we're gonna look at her styling. Just looking at this car, you could already say that it is an FJ Cruiser even from a block away. I mean, look at the way it's been styled. It's got that clunky, boxy, uh, retro 4x4 off-roader look to it with the upright windshield, that long flat hood and all of these bits and pieces that makes it you know look like a Toyota off-roader from the 80s. First thing you'll notice up front are the huge letters spelling out the word Toyota because you know some people might mistake it for another brand so they have to spell it out for everyone to see that yes this is a Toyota FJ Cruiser. Now if you take your eyes off those huge Toyota wordings up at the grill and take a look at the face of the FJ Cruiser you will notice that it sports a very toy-like face with its round headlights and its clunky yellow turn signals that kind of acts like ears and if, if you notice it already has this chunky front bumper but it's not enough to the owner of this FJ Cruiser because he decided to add a metal bull bar up front to help him well clear more obstacles as he drives his FJ Cruiser. Now of course you can't have an off-roader 4x4 without meaty chunky tires and the FJ Cruiser in the Philippines is no exception. We have here a 17 inch wheel shod by Dunlop in 26570R17 tires and these are semi off-road tires to help you get over whatever is on the streets of Manila or even the mountains of Rizal. Another fun fact that you will notice in the FJ Cruiser are these chunky side mirrors and if you'll notice it comes also with a turn signal that is shaped in circle and it looks like it's just been uh, put there as an afterthought as if uh, the engineers or designers who made this was like oh we need to have turn signals and we forgot to put them on the side mirrors and like all right just put in a couple of circular turn signals right there Moving on to the engine, this Toyota FJ Cruiser is motivated by a 4-liter V6 engine that is good for 268 horsepower and 380 Nm meters of torque. Now you may have the power and you may have the grunt, but the biggest weakness of this engine is its fuel economy. You see, driving in Manila City traffic, it could only muster up to 5 kilometers per liter. And in real highway driving, it could only give you back 7 kilometers per liter. So it is a bit of a gas guzzler and that makes it a little bit impractical when it comes to Manila roads. Moving to the doors of the FJ Cruiser, you will notice that it is just a three door. You know, got two doors up front and well a boot door at the back. But in reality, the FJ Cruiser is a five door SUV. So what we have here is a suicide door and the way you open it is kind of weird because you can't just open it immediately just like that. You have to open first the front door and when you open it, 
you still can't open it just like that. You have to reach in and grab a handle inside and pull the handle and that's the only time you can open the rear door. And when you open the rear door, you can just slide in. It's a little bit small, a little bit cramped, but it will do the job. Moving to the back of the FJ Cruiser, you'll have a standard spare tire right here and the boot opens sideways giving you a wide open mouth so that you could load your stuff in and the trunk has a decent amount of space in it not as big as the standard SUVs like the Fortuner, the Montero or even the Land Cruiser but in a pinch this would do. Now the rear of the FJ Cruiser has this special quirk that honestly it doesn't have much use you see the rear glass can be opened without opening the rear boot now how do you do that you take your key and you put it in the keyhole and put it to the right now that you put it to the right you can now lift open the glass and look it even comes with an etch on the glass to make sure that it clears the spare tire. No need to remove the spare tire to open the rear glass window. And honestly, I don't really see the purpose of this feature. Maybe, well, I don't know, maybe when you're in the beach and you're camping or whatever, you want to reach into your stuff without really opening the door. Possibly, but that feature is present in the FJ Cruiser. Moving on to the fuel cap, you will see another weird fact about the FJ Cruiser. You see, coming from a design that was inspired from the 80s, the fuel cap does not lock at all. You could easily just open this. And the stock fuel cap didn't come with a key. So you could just open it and anybody could just dump whatever they want to dump in your FJ Cruiser while you are parked in the lot. Now the owner of this cruiser so, first saw that something like that may happen so he purchased a lockable fuel cap for an additional 1,500 pesos. So that would mean that his fuel would remain safe from possible vandals. But that is a weird fact that the fuel cap is not lockable. Moving to the interior of the cruiser, you will notice that it is completely shod in hard plastic. And that has a practical use to it. You see, the entire interior of this FJ Cruiser could be hosed down and cleaned out if ever you do some off-roading and you get some flood or water or mud inside your cruiser. So even the speakers of this FJ Cruiser are waterproof. The dashboard continues that toy-like theme to it. It gives you that... Uh, feeling that you're inside a toy basically and you have your gauges up front and center you got your compass your altimeter and your clock and of course when you look at the dashboard you will have your instrument panel showing you the usual stuff your tachometer your speedometer and your fuel gauges and all that now since this is a true off-roader it comes with a 4x4 uh, shifter right here for, for high, for low, and of course two-wheel drive wherein it powers the rear wheels. And it comes with an automatic transmission which is a bit of a blessing since you are driving in Metro Manila after all. Now the FJ Cruiser is marketed as a five-seater SUV so I'm going to give the back seat a shot just to see like how roomy the back seat would be. So let's go inside. First thing you notice when you get to the back, well, there is a little bit of legroom, not too much. It makes you feel like you're at the back of a sport coupe. You've got your grab handles at the back of the driver's seat and the passenger seat, just in case you are bouncing all over the place because you're driving off-road. Overall, the back seat is a decent space for somebody who is like maybe 5'6", 5'7", in height. But if you are a 6-footer or taller, then the back seats would be a little bit on the cramped side. 
So now that we've seen some of the features of this FJ Cruiser, it's now time to take her out for a drive just to see how she feels on the road and I'll take you guys with me. Let's go! Okay, driving the FJ Cruiser now. I'm gonna... I'm not gonna take her out off-road because there's really no off-road here in the village. We're gonna encounter some speed bumps though. So let's see the speed bump. Hmm. All right, so first thing that I notice is <laughs> the windshield is very small and it's kind of hard to look out through. But uh, you have a high seating uh, view. You could see a lot. It's a big car, but it gives you that feeling that it is a little bit smaller than its size, but it is quite big. Another notable thing about driving the FJ Cruiser is you've got a huge blind spot towards the right side. I mean, I'm on a left-hand drive Toyota FJ Cruiser, but you've got kind of big blind spot over there on the right. The way that the body is, you know, it's so high and your windows are kind of smallish and the windshield is smallish as well. It makes you feel like you're in a tank. <laughs> That's so funny. It's like I'm driving a tank. Well, it does look a bit like a tank. So I could imagine that maneuvering this thing around in tight Manila traffic would be a bit of a challenge. The steering wheel is nicely weighted. It's okay. It's not that artificial, but it's also not heavy considering that I'm driving a very heavy car. AC is good. I mean, it's sweltering hot right now, but at least it's cooling me down. I'm going through the speed bumps as if it doesn't exist. I mean, that's how chunky this car is. That's how chunky it is. It's unfortunate we're on silly roads because I want to take this out on an off-road track just to see how it handles off-road. And I like the position of the gear stick. It's high up, easy to reach, and gives you that retro feel. It's like you're driving an 80s truck. Okay, another speed bump coming up. Let's just go through it as if it's not there. Whoa! <laughs> See? The suspension, the way the suspension has been tuned is also quite good. You'd expect that a 4x4 off-roader like this would have a harsh suspension, but surprisingly, it drives like a car. It drives like a big chunky car. Yeah, it absorbs the bumps very, very well. You, you just have to get used to that square windshield and that square hood up front. And you just have to mind your blind spots because this car has quite a few blind spots on it. Okay, negotiating this tight gate. All right, <laughs> it makes me feel a little bit bigger than I am. That's why you have to be very careful in checking where the edges of your hood is because you might get a fender bender. And that's how I realize why the owner of this FJ Cruiser decided to put a metal bull bar up front. <laughs> Just in case you get into my blind spot, you will be hit by that all metal bumper. All right, acceleration is pretty good. It's decent. Considering that this is a big car, it accelerates pretty well. Overall, yeah, it is a retro styled car. Even the interior is all retro. It drives quite comfortably, not as retro as the cars that it was based on. It's pretty fun to drive after all. Wow. You just have to get over the fuel economy of this car because man, that is a sore point. 
in the FJ Cruiser. So there you have it everybody, that was the Toyota FJ Cruiser. It's a toy car that has the makings of a future classic. Well, if you are looking for a toy car that has a little bit of practicality to it, then the FJ Cruiser should seriously be on your list. Now luckily, even if this has been discontinued in some markets, notably the US, here in the Philippines, you could still order the Toyota FJ Cruiser from any Toyota dealer and it starts at 2 million 48,000 pesos. There's only one variant available in this market in the Philippines and that's what I showed you guys today. Anyway, I hope you like my videos guys. If you do like my videos, please hit that subscribe button, like my video right now and if you have any comments or any thoughts about the FJ Cruiser, hit me in the comments below. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.